Do you thank you for coming? Glory to God. Praise the Lord. We, we thank God for the opportunity to be here. Thank you so much for welcoming me. It's such an amazing experience to be with all of you in the presence of God. Thank you. Please, let's, let's find our seats. We're going to start with a short word of prayer, and I just want to share some words of encouragement with you. And then I'm sure we can... I, I understand that uh, we have an amazing minister of God right after me who will lead all of us in worship. So I'm looking forward to... Are you excited today? Fantastic, fantastic. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for this wonderful day. We thank you for bringing all of us together under your banner. We worship your name because you create everything. We thank you because you have gathered us here today not because of fanfare. You've gathered us here today not just because we're here to see each other's beautiful faces. You have gathered us here today because you have a message of impact to deliver to each and every one of us. In your word, you said, even before we were born, you conceived us, you knew us, and you had fashioned the purpose for our lives. Lord, may today be the day that we begin to walk in that purpose in Jesus' name. Father, Lord, we pray for each and every one of us under the sound of my voice this morning, that your words shall be the words that permeate, that your words shall be the words that build deep roots for them in Christ. And that at the end of the day, our nation shall benefit from the fruits of these deep roots. And we shall not today be like shallow seed that can be easily cut and cast away but we shall be fruitful and multiply in your kingdom until we establish your kingdom on this earth. We bless your name, we worship you, for in Jesus' mighty name do we pray. Thank you very much for welcoming me here today. I don't have very much to say, but I'm going to try over the next 20 to 30 minutes to share a few words of encouragement and advice, tell a little bit of my story, in the hopes that it inspires all of us. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> that it inspires every one of us, and that at the end of the day, we shall all rediscover our purpose in Christ Jesus. Today, I'm not really, I'm not a, first of all, I'm not a pastor, so I'm just here to share my own experience as an entrepreneur. But I know that many of us may look at people like myself and say, you know, why, why, should, uh, why should we be inviting businessmen to church? Huh? And today, what I want to tell you is about ministry outside of the four walls of the church and about the need for us as a generation to take steps towards establishing God's kingdom on earth. I think first of all, we have to, first of all, remind ourselves as children of God, why are we on earth? What is our purpose here? You know, many times, it's very easy for us to forget that the primary purpose of us on earth is to give, bring glory to God. We are part of God's creation. God want, deposited a piece of himself in each and every one of us on earth because he wanted to show the world what he is capable of. What happens when man, who he has brought closer to himself, children of God, as all of us who are gathered here, inspired by the Spirit of God, exercise dominion over the earth. 
and do the work of establishing his kingdom on earth. That is the work that we are called to do on earth. Now, you might ask, what does that have to do with business and success? You're probably expecting to hear a motivational speech. But I think the first thing for all of us to keep in mind is that whatever God puts into our hearts for the purposes of pursuing his impact is not because of just who we are or because he wants us to be successful. It's because he's intending to use us as vessels is somebody listening to me? He's intending to use us as vessels for his glory. And to be honest, you know, even for me, I was never of that understanding. It took me a while to get to that point, to understand that the work that I do today is not just because God wants me to be successful. He intends good things for all of us. As the Bible says, the plans he has of, for us are what? They are of good and not of evil. But at the same time, what God intends for us is that even as we become successful, we become vessels in his hands. We live in a country with a lot of problems. In fact, many of us experience those problems as young people ourselves. I don't know how many of us might be looking for jobs. I don't know how many of us might have health challenges here and there. I know God will heal all of us in Jesus' name. I don't know how many of us may have great ideas but no resources to pursue them. But what God is telling us today is that the answer to these things is in each and every one of us. God's supernatural miracles, God's divine intervention will be channeled through his vessels. And until we can surrender ourselves to him as empty vessels, to be used for the purposes of establishing his kingdom on earth, of building a society that is more just, of building a society where everybody has enough to eat, building the, the Zion as is described in the Bible, until we can all be used as vessels to do that work. Our work is not over. It has only just started. So I want, you, I want us to take some time. I'm going to share just three brief principles with us of how to walk in impact very briefly. And my hope is that people will take these words, people will take this inspiration, and that we live here today with a renewed energy so that we don't just think of impact as something that happens to us, but we think about it as something we can do for our nation for the people around us, for our communities. The first principle is that for you to walk in the path of impact, you have to build yourself. You have to be willing to ground yourself in a, in a solid foundation. I don't know if um, we can be helped today by the audiovisual people to turn to Luke 180. Luke Verse 1, verse, chapter 1, verse 80. I'm just going to... Yes. 80. 80, not 8. Luke chapter 1, verse 80. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit and was in the desert till the day of his showing unto Israel. The version I use says, until the day of his presentation, until the day of his presentation unto Israel. That was, that's what my version says. And why is that important? Many of us have fantastic prophecies over our lives. We know what it is that God expects from us. We have received wonderful prophecies, wonderful ministrations, words of knowledge about our lives. But we are not willing to work strong in the spirit and to stay in the desert until the day that we are presented unto the assembly. We are not willing to stew in the work. See, these days there's a glorification of doing everything short, short. And I want to share a little bit of my own story 
along these lines. You know, many people see the fantastic introduction today, and I, I'm grateful to God for it. Although I do consider a lot of it as really just God's faithfulness and God fulfilling prophecy over my life. And I know he will do the same for you in Jesus' name. But, you know, I started this journey in 2009. 2009. And at that time, I was still in the university, like some of you are. And I saw a problem around me. I saw a problem in my community, and I built a solution to it. And I was not successful. So I failed. And I was inspired by God to try again. This time, I tried it in another place with Fora. And it was not until 2014. So I don't know how many of us are counting here. 2009 to 2014. That's how many years? Five years. It took five years before, not that I became successful, but I started to build Andela. And it was divine orchestration. And even when I started to help build Andela, it took another three years before people started to hear about Andela. In 2016, Mark Zuckerberg came to visit us in Yaba. And we continue to build and to build and to build. But it's an amazing testimony, but I want you to understand what happened. How many years is that in total? Eight years. Many of us need to work strong in the spirit and stay in the desert until the day God decides to present us. We cannot allow ourselves to be overtly influenced by the world system such that we believe everything has to happen fast, fast. God's blessings come at their own time. The second principle, because I don't have a lot of time, is we need to build depth. So many of us have so much passion, but no skill. Did somebody hear me today? We have a lot of passion, but what? No skill. We live in a world today where, thanks to God, who inspires all knowledge, we have so many things at the tip of our fingers. We have technology at the tip of our fingers. Everything is within our reach. You can learn how to build software online. You can do more than just watch, you know, nonsense on, on YouTube. You can, you can learn a skill on YouTube. I've seen people learn graphic design online. I've seen people learn social, how to do social media work. You know there's a business side to social media, not just the one you used to be attacking people up and down. Technology affords us the ability to learn so much. All the knowledge in the world is at the tip of our fingers. What are we doing to build depths? What are we doing to build roots? Real marketable skill. I like to say, I work in the technology industry, and many of you who know the amazing miracle, the testimony that the technology industry has from last year. You know, this was an industry that when I, when I first got into the industry in 2013 or thereabouts here in Nigeria, many of us were in a building in Yaba, we used to call it CC Hub. Still there, you can go and see it, 294 Harvard Macaulay. I can't forget it because, you know, at that time, I was, in, I was living in, in Yaba. And I would go there every day to meet with other technology people. But I was learning how technology worked, how, was building skill, building depth. And depth is not just skill, it's networks. It's being willing to serve people. It's being willing to build relationships of trust with people. You cannot make impact without building depth. 
I don't know if somebody is listening to me today. If you look at something that's a rock or a heavy object has been placed on, do you not see its mark there? But is that thing light? I don't know if somebody's here. Is that thing light? Something that would make impact. Is it light? It has to be built up. And that's what God is calling many of us to do today, to build some depths, skills, networks, prepare ourselves. And it aligns with my first point. A lot of that depth has to be built in the deserts. When things are tough, when you are not in the limelight, when nobody is giving you mic to speak to all these people today, that is when we are building depth. We are bulking up, waxing strong in what? In the spirit. Even in our Christian faith, we have to build depth. You know, one of the most transformational things that happened to me was the day I discovered God's purpose for my life. You know, I had built, I had worked with the people at Antella, you know, and I'm sure many of you know the story. I had just been doing it because, you know, I was just, at first, because the person that told me to do it was very experienced and he knew what he was doing. But later on, because I saw the impact that it was having on people's lives, and we'll end on that note. But I had just been doing it. But I remember my 25th birthday, I went back to worry where my parents are from, and I just sat down and prayed for a full day on my birthday. I didn't go to anything. And I asked, look, all this, all this, you know, at the time, the, the accolades were starting to roll in. The success was starting to become visible. And I said, okay, what's the plan? I had to sit down with God and ask him, okay, what's the plan? What are we doing here? And he said, look, there's a purpose for your life. We need you to lead the transformation of nations in Africa. We need you to build Nigeria into a global superpower. And these are the industries we need to touch and transform to make it happen. And shortly after that, I resigned at the height of Andela's fame and went and started again. I had to sow myself again into the work with Flutterwave. That was how we started Flutterwave. And God has been faithful. So we need to build depth. We need to find roots. We need to find foundation in Christ Jesus. That is all part of building depth. If we must make impact, we need to build depth. Then finally, we need to build others. Many of us in our society have unfortunately been brainwashed with a principle that is valid but is nonetheless shallow of individual success. We are praying for breakthrough for ourselves. We don't recognize that when God gives you breakthrough, he attaches purpose to it. God gives people breakthrough because he knows what he wants to use them for. God makes provision because he has assignments for what he has provisioned. But many of us just want breakthrough for ourselves. We have to be conditioned to build for others. What are we doing in the work that we are doing today to build for others? Even for those of us that don't have work, how are we being of service to others? For me, one of the greatest points of inspiration and encouragement, one of the signs for me that there's still so much work to do we have such a great body of Christ, yet our society is like this. And I keep having to be asking myself and asking God, where are the fruits? Because even the Bible says what? It says, by their fruits you shall do what? So how do they know us? As children of God, how can we, how can we show that we are making an impact on our society? We need to reflect on these things. Now, my time is short, so I just want us to remember the three principles. I think the first one is that we need to build in what? We need to build in secret. We need to be willing to walk in obscurity for a long time. 
for us to be able to make an impact. We can't just make an impact today. The second one is what? We have to build depth, skills, networks, faith. Because many things about building in Nigeria are not normal. I don't know if somebody is listening to me today. It requires spiritual guidance. And then the last, the last one is what? We have to build with what? We have to build with others. Thank you very much. And I'll open for questions. Thank you. Do you want to clap? Clap very well. Thank you. So he gave us three principles. I want to be sure you got it before we go to question and answer time. What's the first one? What's the second one? What's the last one? Thank you. This is a global youth convocation, Mr. Aboyeji, and we have people listening from all over the world uh, online. Uh, so we have uh, questions online and physical. So we'll take like three questions here. If you have questions for Mr. Aboyeji here, you just come to the left-hand side here and um, just form a queue here. And those online, go to www.impact.org forward slash ask uh, to ask your questions online. Uh, our online people will show us your questions here and we can see only the questions are on the screen uh, that would be answered. So these questions, just be punchy, be straight and be direct. Uh, the first person, uh, the last person here, yes, the, the brother on Polo. Please let's um, present the question screen to our guest speaker. Thank you. Good evening, sir. Please, my question is about... Uh, you talked about building depth. What I want to find out is this. You're trying to build depth, talk about staying in the secret. Uh, my question is this. When you are raising a brand in which you still have to, you know, market yourself, make yourself visible to your audience and all that. And sometimes you just have to put out some things to build trust and all that. So how do we try to manage that alongside we still trying to be under all that needs before coming forth, before the day of our showing forth, like you said, sir. Thank, Thank you. you sir. The next, uh, the sister at uh, using an handkerchief, yes. Quickly, okay. please. Praise God. The sister using an handkerchief, please. Oh. Okay. You can continue. You can continue. Please give her back. Continue, please. Praise God. I want to, I want to ask. If when you receive that um, purpose, the day you received that purpose about your life and you took that drastic decision, how were you able to navigate your way through your troubles and not be like, you have to go back to ground zero. How were you able to navigate the starting point again? And now can you advise students like us or people like us who don't have anything to hold on to when we want to start up or something? So the next person on the queue, the brother, yes, yes, I know smart. Yes. Hey. Yeah, me. Thank you. Yeah. My name is Timilei. Um, in your lua, I mean, the, <laughs> considering the fact that you built, let's say, 66% of um, unicorns we have in Nigeria, that's two over three. I wouldn't consider open unicorn because it's not built by a Nigerian. I mean, how exactly did you do it in this system? I mean, how exactly? And not just how did you do it? I mean, Elomont has done it. I mean, there are other guys that have founded startups that are unicorns. But as a believer, how did you do it? Because the whole system is clouded. The system is darkened. I mean, it's the evil world system. I mean, if you thank consider... You, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm not yet done with the question. I'm not done. I'm not done. I'm not done. I'm not done. So... How exactly did you do it as a believer? How did you do it as a believer? Because the whole system is darkened. Then my other question is based on values. 
Now, if you are raising a team because you are just starting, you don't have money, you don't have anything. So, you want to build with people that have the same values that you have, kingdom values. I mean, you don't want to build your startup with just any old somebody. So, how did you go about it? Not just with um, employees, co-founders, but I mean, even with investors. I wouldn't want an investor who is going to want um, diversity, equity, and inclusion, what the world is calling for today, to invest in my business. I mean, this is a kingdom business. So, how exactly did you do it? I want you to, I mean, you might not be able to answer straight. Maybe it might result into a mentorship or something. How exactly did you do it, sir? That's my question. Thank you. Sorry, let me, one more. This, the lady. Should we, should we take the first three? Okay, let's and do then, okay, okay, so I don't forget. Very important. So the first one is, how do you balance building in secret place and building trust and putting yourself out there? The one thing I always tell people is that customer is one by one. I don't know if somebody heard me. Customer is one by one. First of all, you have to build a product that works for one person, then a second person like that first person, before you even know what future customers might actually want. The mistake a lot of people do is, without a lot of spending a lot of time with one customer that understands you well, you want to build for everybody. And it distracts you because there are people that look like they are your customer, but they are not your customer. There are people that maybe they are just interested because of who you are or because maybe you are their younger brother, but they don't really need the product. When we were building Flutterwave, we had one client for six months. Just one client, one bank was our client for the first six months. We did not open to anybody. It was only after we finished solving their problems, we now said, okay, who is the next person that looks like them? So how do you balance that? You balance it, first of all, by building depth, by connecting one-on-one -on -one with your customers. That's way, when it's time for you to show yourself, right? you will know exactly what to say. You will know what are real pain points and what are just distractions. Your product will be designed to solve a real problem, not just something that you have imagined. But it requires patience. It requires being able to sit in the desert until the day of your showing. Second, when you... The second question from my sister was, when you, when, when, you, know, you receive God's purpose for your life and it requires extreme sacrifice, how do you navigate through the troubles? There are many troubles. There are many troubles because I think the first thing you have to understand is that God's purpose for your, for your life is the most important thing. No matter where, and it's God that owns everything, so it's God that puts you there. No matter where you are placed, when God gives us instructions, we take them. Take them seriously and we do whatever it takes because God honors his word. And you know, the funniest thing is that, you know, at that time when I was leaving Andela, I mean, that was when Mark Zuckerberg was coming to invest. So it was the wrong, most people, the world system would have said, this is the wrong time for you to leave. But do you know one thing that God did for us? The first company to get to a billion dollars was what? Was Flutterwave. God honors his word. You need to understand that God honors his word. So through all the troubles and tribulations, and whatever it is that you are facing, just trust and believe in God because God honors his word. He will help you navigate through the troubles. But there are also practical things you can do to help yourself. You have to have a community of mentors. I had a community of mentors that believed in me. So even when I made such a decision, I had taken counsel and they said, look, go in this direction, there's no problem. You'll be okay. Right? You take the precepts and the principles. You make sure you build with a strong team. You make sure you do the right things. Set things up the right way. Focus on customers. Focus on serving customers. For a lot of people, the reason why they feel ashamed to plant themselves again is because they are full of self. They don't consider themselves vessels. They are full. You have to be empty for God to use you. And that was what we needed to do. And we thank God for the grace, because it takes grace to do that. Now, the fi final question before maybe we take another set. My, my brother, question about how did you... But I think the first thing to keep in mind is I didn't do anything. 
God did it all. Right? Okay, as you can see, you see, I didn't go to, I had the privilege of going to a very good first degree, and I thank my parents for the, and God for the provision to do that. But I didn't do MBA. My parents are pastors. Okay. Huh? They are not, uh, we are not a storied family. We don't have, uh, we are not a big name in Lagos. The kind of people that are supposed to be doing this type of things are the people that have surnames that people, people's parents' parents know. But us, because our Godfather is God the Father, we don't have, we don't have anything like that. You can go and check the history. There's nobody that is sponsoring me. I'm not fronting for anybody except God. I don't know if you're listening to me today. So I think the first thing is to be rooted in Christ. To be rooted in God. To understand that you are doing the work that you are doing so that all the glory will go back to who? God. And that's how you would achieve supernatural exploits. Remember what the Bible says. It says what? They that know what? They are God. Shall do? So... When you talk about 66% of the unicorns, God makes unicorns. The unicorn fairy tale animal, who made it? God. It's God. So he's the only one that can make the unicorns. However, it is also important to understand the principles of building a business. It's very important. You need to learn the lessons that God teaches you. And one of the principles that is very difficult for most people to accept is that building a business is not about making money. It's about meeting needs. Is somebody hear me today? Yeah. Building a business is what? Making money is about meeting needs. There are some people who maybe they can build a billion dollar company by, you know, going to oil, uh, to get oil well. Eh? Or maybe they are established betting company. That's how they became billion dollar company. But look at the kind of businesses that God led us to build. Andela, what does it do? Education. We are taking people that were earning 100,000 naira a month, right? Letting them, giving them training that allows them to earn $100,000 a year abroad. That's what God helped us to do. It's not about making money. The kind of lives that Andela has transformed, right? We can see it. You can go and talk to them. You can see the impact. Shabby, that's what we are talking about today. Flutter Wave. They talked about the number of businesses that are living off the Flutter Wave platform. Businesses that are paying employees, keeping the lights on. Young people whose dreams are now validated because they are able to accept payments. Meanwhile, before, they would tell us to come and pay 150,000 naira if we want to collect online payments. Can you imagine? We are meeting needs. It's not about making money. So when, if you want to build a unicorn business, the first thing is you have to understand who makes them. And who is that? God. So you have to depend on God. You have to listen to him. Some things you will do, the world system will look at it and say, ah, this person is not, is not well. You understand? I'm sure some people that you might talk to will tell you that about in Yolua. Uh, in Yolua is, is different. <laughs> eh? But that I'm not, I'm not here to follow the world system. Right? I'm here to live for Jesus. <laughs> Second of all, you need to understand the core principle of building business is to meet people's what? Needs. It's not to make money. Money is like breathing air. It will, it will happen. If you are meeting people's needs, even if it's donation, they will give you. You understand what I'm trying to say? But first, you must build a business that does what? Meet people's needs. Part of the problem we have in this country and why the impact that we as children of God are supposed to make it is not fully showing is because we are so focused on making what? Money. Money. Meanwhile, there are problems all over our society. Instead of us to be focused on solving those problems, right, in a sustainable way, we are focused on doing what? Making money. So we need to change our mindsets if we want to build more unicorns. But I, I know that God has given his children the grace to build more unicorns. And I know there are many unicorn founders sitting in this audience today, listening to us on television, listening to us 
on, on YouTube or wherever else. So I want all of you to tap into that grace. Because it's God that does what? It's God that builds unicorns. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Aboyeje. I don't know if we, we can um, show some of the online questions. If not, um, if you are and go to www.impact2022.org forward slash ask. Uh, Mr. Aboyeji, you would um, help us. We'll send some of the questions from the side no to problem. you. And um, I fear that this will be the end of the session. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Please let's appreciate Mr. Aboyeji as to welcome choir from the nations.